Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Ford. Good evening. Uh, I have a confession to make at the start. I'm a fan of politics. Uh, I know it's sad, <laughs> but I enjoy watching Prime Minister's Question Time. I don't know if anyone else enjoys watching it. And what I thought I'd like to do this evening is recreate the magic of the House of Commons right here. <laughs> right here live, you ladies and gentlemen. Now, entry-level behaviour in the House of Commons, if you haven't seen it, is when an MP says something that others agree with, MPs make this noise. They go... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you can all try that. I'll, I'll say something that you could barely disagree with, and if you all join in, we'll recreate the magic of Parliament. And, Mr Speaker, it's long overdue in this country that we had a two-day working week and a five-day weekend. Yeah. Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> It'd be great to be an MP. You understand how fun it is now, right, guys? <laughs> right, innit? Now, that's entry level. You all did very well. Do join in at home. And uh, <laughs> the other noise to make is one of disagreement, of course. It's one MPs frequently make. So it's something like people go, whoa, 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 rubbish, whoa, whoa, rubbish, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Just like being an extra in the Queen Vic. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the wrong end of the bar. So I'll say something now perhaps that you might disagree with and all just join in afterwards. So I'd say something like, uh, and Mr Speaker, it's long overdue that we brought in 100% income tax on everyone earning over £6,000 a year. <laughs> Tension in the Commons! <laughs> what a thrilling night it is here in Parliament! Does it feel good? <laughs> <laughs> One of my favourite things that happens in Parliament, however, when you get this barracking atmosphere, is when MPs will barrack a particular member of Parliament, and it's only when they're halfway through a question that everyone else realises... Shit, this is serious. <laughs> now, I want you to all join in with this. I think you'll find the natural flow of when it is you're meant to stop and realise at this moment, it happened just the other week, there's always an MP, there's an MP called Julian Hubbard, this sometimes happens to, and they'll ask a serious question. So, what I want you to do is just heckle me from the outset and while I'm speaking, and you'll find, I think, in my question to the Prime Minister, the point at which you should probably stop heckling. And when this happens, it's electric on TV, all right? So start heckling me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mr Matthew Ford. Well, what the party opposite don't realise was to... The party opposite, Mr Speaker, is that a family in my constituency were murdered this week. <laughs> Amazing when that happens. Just seeing loads of MPs go... Wah, wah. Oh, shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Remarkable television. I think that sort of thing is exciting. That's what I like to see in politics. But a Labour MP recently said that she didn't think people watch Prime Minister's Question Time because it was too much like Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> I don't think I've ever turned on Prime Minister's Questions. I would see David Cameron go, and Mr Speaker, the reason why no one will ever trust the Labour Party again on the economy is because Ed Miliband, the right honourable member's mother, is a slag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just seeing Ed Miliband go, is she no, is she no? Why lie, why lie, why lie? Don't touch me, don't touch me. Why lie? Why lie? It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? For me, Ed Miliband, if he wants to be Prime Minister, has to answer three massive questions. One, how do you deliver social justice in an era where there isn't enough public cash? Two, how does Britain compete with the emerging markets of Japan, Brazil and Argentina? And three, what the hell is that voice all about, mate? <laughs> Sounds like Tony Blair with a cold. <laughs> yeah, Tony Blair would talk like that. Well, look, let's talk about it. And as the years went by and his nose got all bugged up and bugged up, it's, come on, I want to talk about it too. <laughs> come on, guys, look, I want to talk about what's going on. <laughs> Come on. Look, these are big issues, I know. It's not a leader's voice, is it? And you hear Labour MPs saying, all he needs is a bit of media training. Have you ever been on a workplace training programme? You don't learn anything. Because the only reason you go is, doesn't mean I can leave work at four. There's someone I fancy going on there. And will there be those M&S buckets of flapjack bites? Is <laughs> anyone ever goes on a course? You're not going to go on a course and come back a changed man. He's not going to be there one week going, hey, guys, come on. Look, I want to talk about that. No, please. <laughs> Go off on a course and come back the following week. Hello, ladies. I'm Ed Miliband. <laughs> What's that? It's a hook for your knickers. I'm Ed Miliband. <laughs> and it's not going to happen, sadly. Sadly not going to happen. He did an appalling radio interview recently where he was asked 13 times about Labour's spending plans, couldn't admit that they'd want to borrow more. Then he was asked what I would call an open goal question. The interviewer said to him, oh, well, Ed, you're uh, going up and down the country. What are the major issues that people are asking you? 
Now, that is an open goal for him to say, well, look, you know what people are asking me? They're asking me... It's just a voice alone. They said, no. <laughs> you know what people are asking me? They're saying, in difficult times, how can I afford to pay the bills and pay the mortgage? They're asking me why a government isn't on their side in difficult times. They're asking me, what sort of schools would their children be able to go to? You know, hit the government hard on areas where they're failing. Do you know what he said? He went, oh, uh, well, um, I get asked a lot of uh, questions. Uh, one the other day was, uh, someone asked me what I thought about uh, the price of a first-class stamp going up to 60p. <laughs> That's the big issue of the day, is it, Ed? <laughs> Mass unemployment and you're banging on about a postage stamp. What on earth? God forbid he gets to the next election. Ladies and gentlemen, this election is about three major issues. It's about crime, it's about the economy, and it's about ending once and for all the scandal of Kinder Eggs sold without any toys inside. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I'm serious out there. One MP who, to be fair, has given more than his fair share of entertainment this year is Chris Hoon. He ended up in prison for lying about giving his wife speeding points. Uh, he then cheated on his wife. <laughs> And uh, she went to the papers, and then they both went to prison. Uh, it, was a, it was a remarkable fall from grace. I'm a Labour supporter, right? I mean, my idol was Gordon. Gordon Ramsay. And I think it's a real shame that while Chris Hume was in prison, they didn't make the second series of Gordon Behind Bars. If you didn't see the first series, it's Gordon Ramsay cooking with prisoners. It's an amazing TV show. I think Gordon Ramsay's the sort of guy that should be there to take men like Chris Hume down a notch or two. She tells it like it is, doesn't it? Chris, that beef burger is awful. Mark's out of ten, I give it three. And don't give those points to your fucking wife. <laughs> you tell him, Gordon. You tell him. You tell him. <laughs> Europe is a major issue now, facing all the major parties, because what David Cameron has done is said that we're going to have a referendum on our membership of the European Union. The only catch is, it's going to be in the next four years, and he can't tell us which way he is going to vote yet. It just seems bizarre. It's the sort of panicked leadership you see in week six of The Apprentice. <laughs> it's a guy who's been in the boardroom the week before and gone, please, please, Sir Alan, let me be team leader next week and I, I swear to you, I won't fail this task. I swear to you. He's ended up leading the Europe task. He's failed. He gets hauled into the boardroom. Knowing him, he's taking someone popular like William Ague as well. Try and get him knifed. You can just imagine him there going, <laughs> oh, uh, Sir Alan, yeah, I know, um... Technically, I was supposed to uh, lead on the Europe task, but I thought, I thought William was in charge of the whole messaging. <laughs> it's about Paul William Egg there going, don't look at me. <laughs> the last time I took a lead on Europe, we got fucking battered. <laughs> the media doesn't help us in this country, does it? I love Sky News, and I love the way that if they talk like this, it sounds like news is happening live on Sky. <laughs> That voice of authority, it's incredible. They do this thing as well now, on Sky they do this. I don't know why they do this. Good evening, you're watching Sky News Live at 5. Keep those emails coming in, news at sky.com. <laughs> why do people need to get involved in the news? And it's always inane stuff, isn't it? It's always stuff like, good evening, you're watching Sky News Live at 5. Keep those emails coming in. Danielle in Leicester says, I think the government have got it wrong on fuel tax. Dave in Derby says, I think the government have got it right with petrol pricing. Keep those emails coming in live at Sky. <laughs> it's just rubbish. And it's just total nonsense because have you been on the internet? Have you seen what people are like out there? People are mad. People are angry. Read the comments on the Daily Mail website. There's no way that only normal people are emailing Sky News. <laughs> I think for one night, they should just read out all the weird ones. <laughs> just to satisfy me. I would love to turn on Sky News. Good evening, you're watching Sky News Live at 5. Keep those emails coming in. John in London says, I'm not being sexist. I think that the two sexes excel at different tasks. Men excel in intellectual and leadership roles. Women excel at pottering. <laughs> Janice in Newcastle says, This country's recreation parks are a mess. There are too many Jews in this country. <laughs> and Gary in Hereford says, Help. Gay people are now spreading to the countryside. <laughs> Get those emails coming in. News at Sky.com. It's great, isn't it? I'd watch it every night. Now, it would be remiss of me to talk about politics and not talk about Nick Clegg, uh, a man that gets my goat even more than Ed Miliband, partly because of the way that Nick Clegg speaks in that way, <laughs> putting in... 
pauses to make it sound as if though what he's saying is relevant. <laughs> Just talk normally. I saw him tell a joke at the Lib Dem Spring Conference. This is how naffy he is. He went, you know, the Conservative Party is a bit like a shopping trolley. You try and push it forward, but it veers off to the right. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Great gag, Nick. Keep up the good work, mate. <laughs> So, for, by the way, if the Tory party is a shopping trolley, you're the pillock sat in the baby seat. <laughs> if the Tory party is a shopping trolley, the Lib Dems are probably just a bag for life. <laughs> Good for the environment, and everyone forgets about you anyway in the end. <laughs> what matters? The reason why Nick Clegg mainly frustrates me is because the way he speaks, and that, that gets to the heart of the problem. Sometimes politics needs flashes of colour, and it's not always about what you're saying, it's about the way you say it. And to demonstrate this point, I would like to read aloud from the seminal political text, The House at Pooh Corner by A.A. A. Milne. <laughs> now, there are two oratorical styles that I believe uh, are the best styles for delivering politics. One is the Tony Blair. He was a phenomenal orator. Stuff like this. So he does the big... He does the big stuff! Like this! And then makes it personal. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> gets you, doesn't it? Really gets you. And the other is the generic Northern Union rep. Now, I'll come on to him in a minute. I'll do it firstly as Nick Clegg. So I'll read out this passage and you'll see that these words literally fail to leap off the page. <laughs> as it happened, it was Rabbit who saw Piglet first. Piglet had got up in the morning to pick himself a bunch of violets. <laughs> and when he picked them and put them in a pot in there, middle of his house, it suddenly came over him that nobody had ever picked here or a bunch of violets. The more he thought about this, the more he thought how sad it was to be an animal who'd never had a bunch of violets picked for him. Boring, stiff, Clegg. <laughs> <laughs> now, just you feel this in the voice of the master, Tony Blair. <laughs> but as it happened, it was Rabbit who saw Piglet first. Piglet got up early that morning to pick himself a bunch of violets. <laughs> and when he picked them, put them in a pot in the middle of the table, it suddenly came over him. No one had ever picked he or a bunch of violets. And the more he thought about this, the more he thought how sad it was to be an animal who never had a bunch of violets picked for him. <laughs> Tony, Tony. <laughs> Forget the war in Iraq, just get him to read children's stories. Come back, Tony! <laughs> now, the generic Northern Union rep, uh, all you need to know about this is, they do not pause for breath. <laughs> and whatever it is they're talking about, there is a deep injustice at the heart of it. <laughs> As it happened, it was Robin who saw Piglet first. Piglet got a belly that morning to pick himself a bunch of violence. And when he picked him and put him in a pot in the middle of his house, it suddenly came over him. No one had ever picked him or a bunch of violets. And the more he thought about it, the more he thought how sad he was to be an animal who never had a bunch of violets picked for him. <laughs> Conference. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've been Matt Ford. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you.